Cubase 8 opens up more creative options with the ability to render in place. The render in place function allows you to bounce MIDI and audio parts quickly and easily. And you have total control over what to include in the rendered file. When you trigger the render in place command, a new audio track is created with all of the selected settings copied over from the original source track plus the rendered audio event. There are literally hundreds of ways to use the render in place function. Here's how it works. Let's say I want to bounce this instrument track to an audio file. Just select the note data, then open the edit menu and select render. Here's the new track in the audio file. If I grab several MIDI parts and select Render, Cubase creates a separate audio file for each part. But if I want to bounce all of those MIDI parts into a single audio file, I can open the Render Setup dialog, switch the first selection to Render as One Event, and as soon as I hit OK, Cubase re-renders my selection with the new settings. Now all the MIDI parts are bounced to one audio part. The Render Setup dialog also lets you choose how much of the signal path to include in the rendered file. If you select Dry, the audio will be rendered as is, and the channel settings like EQ and so forth will be transferred to the new track, like this. By comparison, if you choose Channel Settings, the new file will be run through the source channel's EQ and channel strip during the rendering to lock in the sound. Then you also have options to include the complete signal path, including effects, and the final option to include the master effects as well. You can opt to have multiple tracks mixed down to a single track. And, of course, you can adjust the name of the rendered file. And if you're including channel effects or master effects like reverb, you can set a tail size in terms of seconds or beats. You can even instruct Cubase what to do with the source track after rendering. Finally, there's a second tab for file settings to adjust the resolution and path. Cubase now offers tempo detection for MIDI. This means that when inspiration strikes, you can capture that performance, then sync it up to the click afterward. Tempo detection is the mirror image of quantizing. Whereas quantizing moves your performance to the grid, tempo detection moves the grid to you. This allows you to lay down a MIDI track without having to first set up and then rigidly follow the metronome. It also means that Cubase will detect and follow the subtle changes in tempo that bring life to a piece of music. Let's start by creating a simple instrument track. Now, with the click track off, the performer can simply start playing. They can focus on the music and not strain to stay with the click. The absence of a click track can also lessen the stage fright that we've all seen in the studio when the performer is too aware of the recording process and their performance begins to suffer. Now, just to demonstrate how this works, let's turn on the click. And you can hear that the click and the performance doesn't line up at all. But we need the performance and the grid to line up if we're going to use things like Groove Agent SE or an arranger track. To do this, select the MIDI performance, open the project menu, and then click on Tempo Detection. Then click Analyze. Cubase creates a tempo track and aligns it with the performance. Now listen. You can hear that the click and the performance now line up. You can use the features like Multiply and Divide to bring the click closer to the feel that you want. You also have tools to correct for offbeats and to smooth the tempo changes. To get the best results from tempo detection, you need at least 7 seconds of material, and 20 seconds or more will yield even better results. 
Also, since tempo detection picks up on the rhythmic pulse of your playing, longer pauses or a lot of held notes can throw it off. Now let's take this one step further and see how easy it is to add drums. I'll create an instrument track for Groove Agent SE. Then load a kit with patterns. Now I can drag and drop one of the grooves onto the instrument track, and I'll line it up with the start of the MIDI performance. And listen. To build this out, we can drag in more grooves or just duplicate the one that we have. And that fast, we have a spontaneous performance which is now in sync with the grid and a drum part to match. Automation is more flexible than ever thanks to the new Virgin Territories feature which improves and simplifies automation handling. If we open a traditional automation lane, you can see that an automation line is automatically present for the entire track. And if we enable write and add just a few automation points, two things happen. An initial value is set for this parameter, and the parameter is now automated for the entire length of the project, even though the automation we added was only a few seconds. The Virgin Territories feature gives us more options. Open the project menu and then the automation panel. Now click on the gear icon to access the automation settings menu. Enable Use Virgin Territory. Now let's add another automation lane below the first one. Notice that the new automation lane is completely empty. Now if I write a few points of automation, you'll notice three differences from the lane above. First, automation data is only applied where it's needed. Second, there's no initial value set prior to the automation. And third, there's no automation data written afterwards, thanks to the Virgin Territory. This means that you don't have to go back and tweak the automation before and after to make sure that it works throughout the project. It also means that you can use spot automation quickly, even in a project that's being mixed manually, or one in where primary automation is handled by an external hardware console. Back on the main automation panel itself, you'll also see a fill mode called Gaps. If you enable gaps and then add more spot automation, Cubase will fill the area in between automatically.